And in a landmark ruling, the government has lost its battle to the Supreme Court over leaving the European Union. Judges in the highest court in the land ruled 8 to 3, where only an act of parliament can authorise the UK's departure from the EU under Article 50, which means only MPs and not the government can decide on how we leave the EU. We have 8 to 3. The Supreme Court rules that the government cannot trigger Article 50 without an Act of Parliament authorising it to do so. Well, MPs, Ministers and MEPs have naturally been reacting to the ruling. It's certainly not what Prime Minister Theresa May had hoped for. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has said, uh, said that his party still respects the result of the referendum, the will of the British people, and will not frustrate the process for invoking Article 50. Meanwhile, Lib Dem leader Tim Farron has tweeted that his party demands a vote on the final deal, and without that, they will not vote for Article 50. Jonathan Arnott, North East UKIP MEP, said he's disappointed by the ruling, but as a democracy, it needs to be accepted. Well, I spoke to Jonathan earlier and asked him what the Supreme Court's decision means for the UK now. We voted seven months ago to leave the European Union, and still, the process for triggering the start of negotiations invoking Article 50 still hasn't been done. That's now going to have to go before both Houses of Parliament. There's going to have to be a bill go through, and this is just going to take even more time. There are some MPs that are against leaving the EU, but would you say the majority of the government just wants to get on with it now? Well, look, of course there are some MPs who are against leaving the EU. Just like I wasn't expecting, I wasn't wanting the Supreme Court decision to be exactly what it was either. But the thing about living in a democracy is that you have to accept the result, whether it's an election, whether it's a referendum, whether it's a judgment of the Supreme Court, you have to accept what's happened. I expect that politicians who said that they were campaigning for Remain now have to respect the result of the referendum and ensure that Article 50 is invoked and not try to derail or torpedo that process. And frankly, I'm worried that what we've seen recently seems to suggest that Labour are trying to take a wrecking ball to the entire process. Labour have said today that they, they aren't going to do that. They're not going to put any pressure on MPs to vote against it. Well, what they have said today as well is the amendments that they want to introduce. So they want to amend and amend and amend in ways that make it uh, unfeasible for any government to be able to meet their conditions. So what they're going to do, very simply, is say, is give a list of conditions, the government then doesn't meet those conditions and then they'll have an excuse. That said then, is there any chance of Brexit actually being blocked? Ultimately, I don't think so. I think there are a lot of uh, road bumps, shall we say, in the way. There are places where you can see there being substantial delay, particularly with amendments that will be bounced back from the House of Commons to the House of Lords. And ultimately, that's going to be something which could result in a delay in the process. What I think the real danger is, is that if those politicians who are still trying to push the Remain agenda are able to get some of those amendments through, those amendments could weaken the UK's hand in negotiations and ensure that we get a worse deal when it comes to Brexit. So I'm more worried about this causing a bad deal at uh, the way that Labour are going to act over this rather than it actually blocking Brexit as a whole. And obviously the North East voted to leave the European Union. What do you think people will be thinking right now here? Do you think they'll be thinking, well, it's, it's a democracy, we have to accept this ruling? I think people will feel frustrated, frankly. You know, when people voted back in June to leave the European Union, the government said, we'll implement whatever you decide. Mm -hmm. And I think people expected that to be implemented quickly. They didn't expect that the Prime Minister would then resign, that we'd have utter chaos for months, and that the government would do nothing about it, and now say, well, we'll trigger a process in March that is going to take years then to complete. I think people expect something an awful lot quicker than this. So people will undoubtedly be feeling annoyed and frustrated at the length of time that this is taking.